Good morning class. Today's math lesson is 5.2. Today we're going to do factors and divisibility. Our essential question, how can you tell whether one number is a factor of another number? Let's unlock the problem. Students in Carlos's art class painted 32 square tiles for a mosaic. They will arrange the tiles to make a rectangle. Can the rectangle have 32 tiles arranged into three equal groups without gaps or overlaps? Let's draw a model. So we want three equal groups, so we're going to go one, two, three. And if I go over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I know that's 30, right? Because three times 10 is 30, and I can count them one, two, three, but it's 32. So that would be two more. So look, I'd have a gap right here. So that does not work, right? A rectangle cannot have 32 tiles that are arranged into three equal rolls. So another way besides doing the model is to use division. So if three is a factor of 32, then you know that the unknown factor in three times the unknown factor is going to be it equals 32 is a whole number. So think, divide to see whether the unknown factor is a whole number. So 3 can go into the 3 tens one time, and it goes in evenly. We subtract it. We get 0. We bring down the 2. 3 cannot go into the 2. It can't go into the 2. So you're going to have a remainder of 2. So it's gonna, it goes in equally 10 times with a remainder of 2. So the unknown factor in 3 times the unknown factor equals 32 is not a whole number. It can't be a whole number, otherwise it would have gone in equally. So a rectangle cannot have 32 tiles arranged into three rows, at least equally. Explain how you can tell if 4 is a factor of 30. I can divide 30 by 40, and since there is a remainder, then I know that 4 is not a factor of 30. So divisibility rules. So a number is divisible by another number if the quotient is counting is a counting number and the remainder is 0. So basically, if it goes in equally, then we know it's divisible by it with no remainder. So some numbers have a divisibility rule. And if you know these divisibility rules, you can use those divisibility rules to tell whether one number is a factor of another. And it's going to make it so much easier when you do the really large numbers as you get older. So let's look at the divisibility rules. For a 2, the number is even. So if the number is even, then you know that it's going to always be divisible equally by 2. For 3, the sum of the digits should be divisible by 3. So if you add up the digits in the number, and if it's divisible by 3, then the number will be divisible by 3. For 5, if the last digit is a 0 or a 5, then it will be equally divisible by 5. For 6, if the number is even and divisible by 3, so it needs to be an even number and it has to be divisible by 3, then 6 will go into it equally. For 9, if the sum of the digits is divisible by 9. Okay? So, is 6 a factor of 72? So you have to think, 72 is divisible by 6, then 6 is a factor of 72. So let's test the divisibility rules. Is 72 even? Yes, it is even because it ends in a 2, right? And 2, 4, 6, 8, and zeros are even. Then it says, what is the sum of the digits of 7 and 2? Well, 7 plus 2 is 9. Is the sum of the digit divisible by 3? Well, yeah, I know 3 goes into 9 because 3 times 3 is 9. So, yes, because 9 divided by 3 equals 3, right? And the remainder, and with no remainder, goes in equally. So 72 is divisible by 6. Because remember, it says to be divisible by 6, the number needs to be even, and it needs to be divisible by 6. We said it's even, and we said it's divisible by 6. So, or we said it's divisible by 3. So we know that it is divisible by 6. So 6 is a factor of 2. 72. All right, try this. List all the factors for 72 in the table. So 1 times 72 equals 72. 
Well, 2 times 36 equals 72. So 2 and 36 are factors. 3 times 24 is 72. So 3 and 24 are factors. 4 times 18 is 72. So 18 and 72 are factors. 5 does not go into 72 because remember it doesn't end in a 0 or a 5. But 6 is. So 6 times 12 is 72. So 6 and 12 are factors. 7 does not go into 72. But 8 does. And it goes in 9 times. So 8 times 9 is 72. So 8 and 9 are also factors. So here are all the factors of 72. It has a lot of factors. So how can you check if 7 is a factor of 72 and explain? So there is no divisibility rule for 7. So if 72 divided by 7 has a remainder that's not 0, so if it doesn't go into it equally, then it is not a factor of 72. So is 4 a factor of 28? Draw a model to help. So we're trying to find 4, so I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, and then we'll have 28 in the box, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I happen to know that 7 does go into it equally, so I kind of have an edge. But you could just count the squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And you could just keep doing that until you get the 28. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. And since it does go in evenly with no gaps, then 4 is a factor of 28. Okay, so it says, is 5 a factor of the number, right, yes or no? So remember the divisibility rule for 5 is that the number needs to end in either a 0 or a 5. Well, 27 does not end in a 0 or a 5, right? So the answer is no. 30 ends in a 0, so the answer is yes. 36 does not end in a 0 or a 5, so the answer is no, it is not a factor. 53 does not end in a 0 or a 5, so the answer is no. 50, um, it is not, it, 5 is not a factor. So on your own, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to do number 6, 7, 8, and 9. And on these, you're looking to see if 9 is a factor, yes or no. Um, and then you're going to list all the factor pairs for 24. And I'm not going to have you do 39. I'm just going to have you do 24. Um, one way, remember the divisibility rule for 9 is that it has to divide into it equally. So a trick could be to use your... Um, Remember to use your times table chart, and you could see, does 9 go into them equally? So that might be a quick way to do yes or no here. And then I want you to list the factors of 24. And then you're going to enter those answers into a Google form, and you're going to do the Think Central today. All right? Good luck. And if you need me, I'll be on the carpet.